We're spending some time polishing the thread. I let it cool off overnight. When I went down in the morning, this is what I got. Now we get into the fun part of the operation. I get to clean out all the gunk from the chuck, disassemble it, see if I can't make this work a little better. Well, now that we have the back fairly well cleaned off, attempt to remove this plate. One, two, three. So far, success. After a great deal of tapping and fiddling, I realized that there's a little screw holding the gear in, which holds the back in. Well, that would explain why I was a little stiff and not wanting to work. And having that gear in place would explain why this didn't want to come out. So pulling the gear will make all the difference in the world on that. And I think some paint thinner will make a big difference in these two things. This part of the job is 
just as much fun as you can imagine. Now that's what you have to do when you go through the process of buying a chuck on eBay. Now the person selling the chuck, they made good on the deal. I sent him a message and said that the chuck was in bad shape, it had been acid etched, and that it was full of junk. And they said, tell you what, we'll cut the price in half. That took a $60 chuck, which was actually a pretty good price, down to 30. And that made it worth my try time and trouble to go through and clean this chuck. Not gonna mention the guy's name because he was a good dude and made good on his promise. When you buy box lots of stuff and sell it on eBay, sometimes the seller gets tricked the same as the buyer. Read a lot of descriptions and uh, read a lot of descriptions and did some research on cleaning chucks because it's been a while since I'd done it and I wanted to see if there's anything new. A lot of the guys said don't use grease on the chucks. Some of the guys said use extreme pressure grease on the chucks. Uh, all of them were concerned about attracting dirt and dust. I've had pretty good luck with a, a compound called Dry Slide. I wasn't able to find any here locally uh, and I didn't want to wait for an order to come in from Amazon. So I got something that's supposedly the same thing. We'll find out. But I use dry slide on guns because they get dirt in them and then the mechanism jams. So you want to have something that doesn't attract dirt. Oil attracts dirt. Grease attracts dirt. Grease is just oil with a soap in it. So as the oil dries out, the grease leaves the soap behind and the soap turns into a hard cake which is what I was finding inside this chuck. I thought I'd try this dry slide. It's always been really good for me. It, it uses a, a molly base to perform the lubricating effect. And it dries off and doesn't leave any trace of oil behind. So it can't attract dirt, doesn't allow it to stick. So I'm going to spray all these parts and then I'm going to assemble the chuck. Now we won't go through all the warnings on this can because some of them are kind of ridiculous. Uh, to avoid serious burn injury, do not let the can touch battery terminals, electrical connections on motors or appliances or any other source of electricity. Do not breathe vapor or spray mist. Deliberate inhalation of liquid vapor or spray must may be Deliberate inhalation of liquid vapor or spray mist may be harmful or fatal. I know that there are some people that will do damn near anything for a buzz. But anybody that sticks a spray can of paint up their nose, I figure they got what's coming to them. It's their problem.
something that I forgot to do, which turned out to not be a problem at all, is I forgot to align the backing plate with the chuck and put stamp marks on it so that I could identify it. Because of the way the chuck was dipped into the acid pickling solution trying to get the rust off, I have this line up here where the acid etched into the chuck. So that tells me exactly how the chuck came apart and I'm able to put it back where it was. Don't recommend that as a method of identifying where the chuck goes together. Well, it turns a lot easier than it used to. Now I'm gonna install the chuck jaws. And you'll see this other places there, almost all the chucks are the same. Each chuck is marked. And each chuck jaw has a number stamped in it. On this chuck, they've stamped the number right next to the groove where the jaw goes. Number one goes in slot number one is this one over here. You want to have See the scroll moving in the chuck. This little notch right here, that's where the beginning of the scroll is. You want to have that just before it comes into the window. When you turn the scroll you can see it engages the jaw and moves the jaw in. Then before that same notch comes over here into the number two spot. You slip the jaw in. And the number two spot starts pulling the jaw into place. Then we come over here to the number three and do the same again. Now this is an old chuck, it's fairly worn. Still got nice solid jaws in it, but it moves really easily. Now the dry slide probably has something to do with that also. I'm gonna make sure that everything works freely before I take it off the bench here. No point putting it on the lathe and then having to take it all back off again. Huh, perfect alignment, just the way I want it. This dry lubricant evaporates completely, leaves behind the uh, lubrication. The liquid is just a carrier. So I can spray this thing down pretty liberally and not worry about it. It also acts as a rust preventative at least that's what the label says. So I can't see anything wrong with making sure that I get the whole chuck coated.
as always, I have to lay it on plug while I'm working. This is the closest thing to round that I have. It's a Woodruff key cutter. Well, that's practically amazing. I have one thousandths of an inch run out. That's the maximum tolerance of the spindle itself. So that chuck is just about perfect. Time well spent. It was a lot of work getting this chuck to go, but now that I've got it put together and everything is clean and working, it's marvelous. I'm, I'm impressed that it has only one thousandths of an inch run out. I expected like four or five. Very happy with the result. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments below. You know, I read them all. Thanks for watching. Now I can set about uh, repairing the windmill that I need started this project for three days ago.